Hey, Astro Kids, and welcome back. And in today's video, I'll be talking about Saturn and Gemini, including the three nakshatras. So make sure that you stick around for those three nakshatras at the end of the video. Before we get into this, though, we have to understand what does Saturn represent and what does Gemini represent in order to understand how Saturn will behave in the sign of Gemini. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. So before we start, I just want to give a few quick disclaimers here. You want to check to see the position of Saturn in your chart. Make sure to see if Saturn is conjunct or aspected by any other planets, as this will definitely alter the results. You also want to see what house is Saturn positioned in? And I made an entire series of Saturn through the 12 houses. So if you have not seen those videos yet, I will leave a link for that above and down below so that you can check out your position of Saturn. It's also important to see what house does Saturn rule because it will definitely indicate the significators of that house. Along with this, it's important to understand that there are specific moments where Saturn will become active in your chart. So specifically, when you have reached the age of 29, around that age is when Saturn will return back to its original location in your natal chart. So that is a significant moment where the karmas of Saturn will become very evident to you. Also, Saturn's maturity is going to be at the age of 36. So around the age of 35, you will find that you are starting to mature into this energy. So basically from the age of 35 up until 45 and onwards is where you will see the increase of the blessings of Saturn coming into your life, especially if you have done that karmic work that is necessary for Saturn in your chart. Also, some other important moments are going to be during a Saudi Saudi. So when Saturn is positioned either 12th, 2nd, or in the same house as your moon sign, this will also be a significant moment for you as well. I've also made a video on Saudi Saudi. So if you have not seen that, make sure to check it out. I will leave a link for that above and down below in the description as well. Along with this, the Dasha period of Saturn is very important. This is probably the most important activation of Saturn in your chart. So if you're going through a Saturn Dasha, then you are definitely going to experience the qualities of Saturn very strongly in your life. And I've also made a video on the Saturn Mahadasha Buktis. So if you've not seen that, make sure to check that out to see what each of those sub-periods within the Saturn Mahadasha will look like for you. Another important indication can be if Saturn is transiting through a specific place in your chart or is coming into a conjunction with an important indicator in your chart, then Saturn can also have a strong influence on your life as well. You also want to see is Saturn retrograde, is Saturn in a combustion, because all of these things will definitely indicate that there are some heavy karmas that are attached to Saturn that need to be seen as well. And also, is Saturn in a pop car to yoga? This is when there are two planets, especially when there are two planets that are malefic that are hemming in on the planet. So this is also important to see if there are any karmic blockages that are in there as well. Another important factor to take in mind is that Saturn will aspect 3rd, 7th, and 10th from its position. So in astrology, all of the graha will always give a drishti aspect on to the seventh house of the chart. And the seventh aspect is always going to be an aspect of desire. So whatever that house is that is opposing Saturn is what Saturn desires in your chart. So that is important to see. And again, I've spoken about this on the video of Saturn through all 12 houses. The third aspect is always going to be where there are the most challenges, the most karmic situations where you have to apply a lot of effort and work in your life to see results come true. The 10th aspect is going to be the final aspect of Saturn, which indicates the actions, the deeds, and results that are coming through that Saturn position. So these are also important to see as well. 
another method of seeing how Saturn will behave in the sign that he's placed in is to see where this sign is actually positioned from the home sign of Saturn. And there's two homes of Saturn, Capricorn and Aquarius. But Aquarius is really the office sign. It is the Mulatricon sign. So you can see where has the sign gone from the position of Aquarius, but you could also see it from Capricorn as well. Another important factor is how to interpret Saturn in your natal chart. So if you're looking at this video, you may be familiar with where Saturn is in your natal chart, but it's also important to see where is Saturn in your D9 Navamsa chart, especially because Saturn once again has some heavy karmas that are attached to it. So we want to see how does Saturn mature? What are the fruits of Saturn as it comes into the D9 Navamsa? If Saturn is getting better in your D9 Navamsa, then this is a great sign. So especially if you have Saturn in a difficult position in your D1 Rashi, but then it is in a better, more beneficial position in the D9, then this is a great indicator that Saturn is going to mature very well in your chart. And of course, if Saturn stays in the same condition, then this may also be good as well if Saturn is already placed in a beneficial position in your D1 chart. But if Saturn gets worse in the D9, then that definitely means that there are remedial measures that need to take place. And so it's important to consult with your astrologer, someone like me or anyone who you are consulting with to see what those remedial measures would be to help lift Saturn out of that difficult position. And of course, if you're interested in having a consultation with me, all of my services are listed on my website. The link for that is down below, astrochartswithdaquan.com. You also want to see where is Saturn going in the D10 to Samsa chart because Saturn is, as I will explain in a few moments here, very much related to work. It is how we apply effort in our lives. And so you can actually see some aspects of your work life through Saturn's position as well. So you want to see where Saturn also plays in the D10 if you want to find out some details about your career. The D60 can also be a valuable resource to see where Saturn's placed because D60 is essentially holding the karmas of our past, present, and future. So if you really want to see what were those past karmas that led to some of these karmic difficulties that you're facing in this life, then it's very important to see where is Saturn position in the D60 chart. Now let's talk about some remedial measures that are related to Saturn. And generally, I don't give out gemstones or special remedies that are normally used by Vedic astrologers. Saturn, I see as a planet that definitely requires you to do some kind of work or service in order to pay off those karmas. So it's very important that you're not just taking a gemstone or doing some special remedy to make this happen. But along with those gemstones and remedies that you're also doing some type of action that will definitely help with Saturn's challenging karma, because Saturn definitely wants us to do the work, wants us to put in the effort to pay off that debt. Saturn doesn't like when we take shortcuts, when we try to cheat in our karmic duties in life. So definitely to appease Saturn in your chart, doing service of any kind can be very helpful. Whether you're getting involved with a soup kitchen, doing some kind of charity, helping those in need, helping elderly people can definitely be a great remedy because Saturn represents everything that is older everything that takes time, that is the old man who limps is this archetype of Saturn that we see for sure. So helping out the elderly is an amazing remedy for Saturn in your natal chart, but also any kind of service that you can do, anything where you're helping those in need. Another great remedy is to feed the crows because Saturn is definitely related to crows and cemeteries. So that could also be a great remedy to use if you have Saturn placed poorly in your chart. Along with this, though, any kind of sacrifice, Saturn's about limitation. It is essentially about sacrificing, which we see through the three nakshatras that are ruled over 
by Saturn. So actually it is about giving something up. It's about moderation. So if you can give up some habit in your life, if you can find something that you can give up, like maybe a favorite food or an activity that is enjoyable, then this can also help with Saturn as well. And of course, the most important remedy of Saturn is to always remain ethical, humble, and to be persistent in your task and responsibilities. To not try to take shortcuts to deceive people, but to always remain ethical in your actions. And this will definitely help with any challenges that you have with Saturn. So one thing that's important to understand when Saturn is placed in the sign of Gemini is that Mercury, which is the ruler of Gemini, is somewhat of a friend to Saturn, which means that this can actually be a great placement for many of you. But there are still some challenges because, of course, Saturn is a very karmic planet that is going to test you, that is going to give you obstacles where you have to pay back that karmic debt. So what does Saturn represent in the chart? Saturn, as I mentioned earlier, is the old man who limps. So most things regarding Saturn are things that take time. Saturn's about building structure, order. It is about being systematic. It is about really creating a sense of organization and stability. So Saturn doesn't like short-term gratification. Saturn likes when we actually put in the work to build a solid and stable foundation. Saturn also represents maturity because again, it's about things that take time. So Saturn usually presents obstacles to us when we are younger, where we feel blocked, we feel restricted wherever Saturn is placed in our chart. And as we get older and go through different experiences, Experiences, we begin to mature into this energy. Saturn also, though, represents longevity. So Saturn actually is the representation of death and longevity because, again, it is about the things that take time, that last. So it is the longevity of life. So Saturn, again, as I mentioned earlier, is connected to cemeteries because it is the planet of death. So it is about really, once again, creating things that last. It's about the things that are of the past, things that hold weight to it, that hold meaning to it, that have longevity to it. Saturn also, again, is about restrictions, limitations, obstacles that we face, all sorts of challenges in life that help us to pay back that karmic debt that we've accumulated from our previous incarnation. Saturn also is about work once again. It's about our work ethic, our ability to apply ourselves to be perseverant in our task and responsibilities. So Saturn doesn't like when we slack off. Saturn is all about testing us to see if we will really put in that effort to push forward. This is very important. Saturn also is associated with government in the sense that it is again about organization. Saturn also represents, though, the servants, the working class, because Saturn opposes the sun. So as the sun is the king representing people in high positions, Saturn represents those in those lower positions that is seen in the chart as well. Saturn also, interestingly enough, this is something that is and talked about a lot in astrology, that Saturn represents spirituality as well, because Saturn, again, is about moderation. It's about limitation. It is about that discipline that we have. And so this is also a part of our spiritual journey in a way as well. Saturn actually is depicted as an introvert who is meditating in the forest. So it is connected to our spiritual journey. Now, what does Gemini represent then? Gemini is a dual sign, which means that there's definitely a lot of adaptability, changeability that is happening in this sign. It is also an air sign, so it is very intellectual. It's full of ideas. It wants to connect, wants to relate, wants to communicate, wants to exchange information. Gemini also is ruled over by Mercury, which is the planet of communication. And we know that Mercury gets exalted in Virgo. So this is not necessarily the more practical side of Mercury that we see in the sign of Virgo, but it is definitely about communication. It's about, again, exchanging information and ideas, connecting with people. So this is a very social sign. It is all about connecting with people, creating these 
exchanges of information, these interactions that help to churn all of this information that is in our heads. So this is a very analytical type of sign for sure. Gemini is definitely very unconventional in some ways. It can be a trendsetter, a pioneer, full of all sorts of innovative ideas, thinking ahead into the future. Very creative, very intellectual, very talented sign. Gemini is involved in any form of communication from speaking to writing can be seen with this. Gemini also rules over the arms, the shoulders, the hands. So it is associated with the communication that is seen through body language. A lot of people communicate with their hands where they're moving around their arms. This is associated with Gemini as well. Gemini also is associated with mimicry because Gemini is symbolized by the twins. So it is about things that are duplicate, that are copies, replicas. So this ability to actually mimic another person can be seen through Gemini as well. Gemini typically is an entrepreneurial sign. It wants to take these ideas and use this in business because Mercury ultimately is a businessman. Mercury is about taking our intellect, our skills, our ideas, and turning it into profit. Gemini can be connected to journalism, to media, to entertainment, performing arts, anything at all where you are putting your ideas and your knowledge out into the world, your skill sets. This is all associated with Gemini. Gemini, interestingly enough, is also a very sexual sign. It can be very sensual, very romantic, because Gemini is seen as the twins. But in Vedic astrology, the imagery of these twins is actually a man and a woman holding each other. So it represents the union of the masculine and feminine. It is actually a sexual energy that is seen in this sign of Gemini. So what happens then when Saturn comes into the sign of Gemini? Well, firstly, Again, Saturn can create obstacles, limitations, restrictions. So sometimes at a younger age, there are issues around communication. Sometimes there can be speech disorders, speech impediments that can be seen. Now for this, you do want to check to see what is the placement of Mercury and Moon in the chart to really understand these communication issues. So if Mercury's placed well, this will not be so much of an issue. But when Saturn comes in here, there is a need to discipline and organize the way that you use communication. So it can make you a very technical person. Typically with this placement, you're very critical. You are always picking apart things. And this can actually mean that sometimes you are a bit overly critical where you don't always trust everything. Sometimes you don't trust yourself or you don't trust other people. And so you're constantly picking things apart, finding flaws in it, wanting to redo it, this can be seen as well. And this can create some obstacles for you where you can start things, but not necessarily see it all the way through. There can definitely be some frustration in this sign, some lack of patience that can be seen when Saturn comes into Gemini. This can also mean that you are someone who's very good at organizing information, organizing ideas. So what's interesting about this position is that Actually, as I mentioned earlier, Mercury and Saturn are friends. So this is actually a great position for your intelligence, for your organizational skills, for your ability to use your skills. You are a very clever and talented person with this placement. The problem is, is that, again, there is a lack of confidence or a lack of faith, a lack of trust that is seen here. And this is what can hold you back. So it's not necessarily that you don't have the skills or the ability to succeed. It is more of this critical nature that is holding you back. So this is something to watch out for with this placement. Sometimes there can also be judgment, there can be humiliation, there can be all of these sorts of situations that's coming from that fearful factor of Saturn that can create some of these obstacles around communication. So you could have a negative experience in your childhood that makes you speak less. This can be seen as well. 
But this placement can make you very technical, very scientific, very much oriented towards innovation, towards thinking outside the box. Again, you can be a very clever and talented person with Saturn and Gemini. This definitely can make an excellent position for a writer, for a scientist, again, for anyone who is able to take ideas and organize them in a systematic way. But this is definitely a placement that can give talent in writing for some of you, for sure. But this placement, sometimes this can also get you into salesmanship because again, Gemini is very entrepreneurial. And because Saturn is slow moving, sometimes it could also make you skilled with communicating in ways that are long form, like writing novels or doing speeches, things that require actually taking your time to mull over all of the details and to bring all of this information together. This could potentially on a physical level, on a health level, create some obstacles regarding those body parts that are related to Gemini as well. So there could be shoulder pain, there could be some sort of issue like arthritis or something in your limbs that can be seen with this as well. This mainly though is again creating this lack of trust and this is the issue. Now, another factor that can be seen with this placement, though, is changeability. Again, I mentioned that Gemini is a dual sign where there is a lot of restlessness, a lot of adaptability to this. So there can be situations of sudden transformation or suddenly moving from one location to the next that could also be related to this placement as well. Sometimes you really just feel stuck in life because, again, there's this frustration, there's this impatience, there is this critical nature that can definitely hold you back with this. Now, Gemini is both masculine and feminine, as I mentioned earlier. It represents this duality, which means that this, on one hand, can make you very technical, very analytical, but also can make you very creative, which can open up doorways to other professions such as music, art, again, entertainment, anything where you are creatively expressing yourself can be seen here as well. And something that sometimes those with Saturn and Gemini don't realize is their impact on other people. A lot of people really appreciate their intelligence, their ingenious, their skill level. But again, sometimes you're not always seeing this because of your critical nature. So sometimes it is nice to recognize that other people actually appreciate the things that you do, the things that you are talented in. This can definitely be seen as well. And of course, because Gemini represents siblings as it's connected to the original third house of the chart, there can be sibling issues. There can also be issues with other family members as well, though. So there can be all sorts of conflicts all sorts of situations going on with the family that can be seen. And this can be a result of past life situations as well. If you are able to really step into your confidence and to realize that people really do appreciate you and also to get over some of this frustration, this critical nature, but to just allow yourself to keep going, even if you feel frustrated, you will find that actually you can attract a lot of success, a lot of fame, a lot of appreciation from others around you. So this is not a negative placement at all. Saturn and Gemini can be very helpful for your success. But this is definitely all about you believing in yourself. Having faith in your abilities is extremely important. Now let's talk about Saturn and Mixtura. And we talked a little bit about this in the previous video. So this is a recap of what we discussed in the Saturn Taurus video about the nakshatra of Mixra. What happens when Saturn comes in here? Well, what is Mixra, first of all? Mixra is representing the deer's head. So this is all about searching. It is representing a deer that is searching through the forest aimlessly. So there's a lot of restlessness that is in this Mixra nakshatra. It is all about movement, about change, about pursuing a certain path in life. It's looking for meaning and fulfillment for happiness. And so there's definitely a search, a quest for this in life. And when Saturn comes in here, this can actually be a good thing where this can give you 
a sense of purpose and direction, your drive, your determination to find that path, that thing that fulfills you can give you a lot of ambition to succeed. So this can be very helpful for those of you who have this. It can make you very sexual, very sensual, romantic with this placement as well, similar to what we saw in the Rohini Nakshatra. But also this is definitely a placement where you want to make other people feel happy as well. Mainly though, this is going to play out through your career situation and the way that you apply yourself to your actions in life, that this is definitely going to give you a lot of focus, a lot of determination to see your goals through. And if you want to know more about that Mikshra Nakshatra, you can also go ahead and go back to my previous video where I go into more depth on it. But basically it is about this purpose, this drive that allows you to achieve success. Now let's talk about the next nakshatra, which is Ardra. Ardra is a very interesting asterism in our zodiac here. Ardra is falling right in the middle of Gemini. So it is the most like Gemini out of these three. And Ardra is ruled over by Rudra. And we can actually see this even in the name Ardra, that part of the name has Rudra in it. So it is connected to this storm god known as Rudra, which is also a form of Lord Shiva. So it is the destroyer. But in this form of Rudra, it is about storms. It is about natural disasters. It is about basically destroying and breaking things apart to create new life to transform things. So this is what we see here. And Ardra is symbolized by a teardrop or a diamond. So it is about perfecting things with this diamond. It is about the pressure that is needed to apply effort to make things happen. So there's a lot of ability to be driven and determined in this nakshatra for sure. Ardra is also represented by a human head which is relative to the human nature. So it is connecting us back to our primal instinctual nature. So there's a bit of an animalistic quality that is also somewhat associated with Ardra. This hunting, this connection with nature and natural things can be seen in Ardra as well. The teardrop is about releasing pain and trauma. So this is known as the star of oppression, where there is a desire to remove the oppression, to remove the suffering, not only within oneself through this experience of crying, this cathartic release, but also on a global scale in terms of creating peace and harmony within society. So there can definitely be an activist side to this Ardra Nakshatra as well. Ardra is ruled over by Rahu, so it is very eccentric. It's very innovative, very forward-looking. These are super intelligent people who are able to set trends, who are able to pioneer, to come up with all sorts of ideas that really push us into the future and create technological innovations that set trends within society. All sorts of things can be seen with this that is all futuristic and creative. And of course, Ra, who has this power to create confusion and to create chaos, there is somewhat of a restless energy to Rahu, which is also related to this Rudra energy of creating storms. So there is a lot of suddenness that is in this Ardra Nakshatra, where it also can be related to transformation, to sudden events, to natural disasters, to storms. Sometimes there's an interest or fascination with storms that is also seen in this Nakshatra. So what happens then when Saturn comes Comes into Ardra. Well, this is definitely going to be a position where when you get frustrated, you tend to just give up or to throw things away to get rid of things. You want to just start over. You feel completely frustrated and you want that fresh new slate. You want that new experience where you can just start from the bottom up once again. So this is coming from this transformative effect of Rudra, which is ruling deity here. So there's definitely a lot of transformation that is happening. A lot of 
analyzing, critiquing, breaking things apart, retrying things that can be seen with this position for sure. This definitely can make you a perfectionist, someone who is super analytical, super into the details. You can be very self-critical of your work, which again plays into this role of just throwing things out and starting over again. With this position, this can also show that there can be a dominating effect with this placement, especially if you are in work mode with this. You definitely are all about getting things done and can be very much intense in the way that your energy comes across to others. This could also be seen in the people who represent Saturn. So again, you want to see where is Saturn placed? What house does it rule? The people who are connected to that house can have an ardor nature about them. This also can represent servants, people who work for you is all connected with Saturn as well. This can also show that you are inclined towards politics, towards activism, towards causes that can help people. Again, Saturn's about work and Ardra is very much interested in abolishing the oppression of society, of really helping people to get out of their suffering, to get out of the pain, to get out of these restrictions that prevent people from being who they truly are. So this could get you involved with some sort of rights or movement where you want to help those in need. But this can make you a very powerful and dominating person in the political world as well, where you want to crush your opponents. You want to really come out on top in these situations. This could also show if you are leaning towards the creative side of Gemini, that there is something intense and dramatic about your artwork as well. And it could have some relation to destruction or storms or something that is dramatic. And this can come out even in performing arts, playing in these really dramatic roles can be seen as well. Sometimes this could also get you into weather, into storms, storm chasing, All of these things can be seen with this position as well. This could also get you into technology, into innovation, into things that are futuristic. Looking into our future and how we can move forward in life can also be seen with this placement as well. You could potentially deal with a lot of information, a lot of things that you have to sort out or arrange with this placement. But for the most part, what this shows is that there's definitely a need to work on self-confidence and believing in yourself because there's definitely this tendency to be critical and to just break things apart and to restart over and over again. And sometimes this can stop you in your tracks where there's actually an inability to move forward. So this is what this shows when Saturn is placed in Ardra. Now let's talk about Saturn in Ponervasu, which is actually going to extend into the sign of Cancer. So we'll also talk about it a little bit when we get into Saturn and Cancer as well. So Ponervasu means the return of the light. So it is all about things that return, that come back. And we can see that this theme is continuing all throughout this sign of Gemini, that there is something about change, about transformation, about restlessness, about movement that is happening here with this being a dual air sign. But specifically in Parnavasu, the symbol is an arrow that returns back to the sender after being fired. So there's definitely this tendency of trying things over again, of making mistakes a few times and retrying it until you get it right. And with this nakshatra, there is sometimes a tendency for things to happen in threes, where suddenly on the third try is when things tend to work out. Ponavasu is ruled over by Aditi, which is the goddess which rules over the infinite space. So there's also an independence about this nakshatra as well. These are people who like their freedom, who like their independence, who like to do things in their own way. There's also a sort of benevolence or innocence that is to this Ponavesu nakshatra as well. Now, this is a very knowledgeable, very philosophical because this is a Jupiter-ruled nakshatra. So not only are we getting the effects of Mercury, but also Jupiter, which is making this very philosophical, 
very intellectual, very much about exploring different ideas and possibilities. These are super intelligent people, super idealistic, theoretical can be seen here. And these people also can be environmentalists wanting to really make the planet a better place. There also can be a connection with home that is seen here. This is another symbol of Ponavesu is the home and the chariot. So there is this connection with home and travel where these people can have a tendency to travel, come back home. There's this connection between these two. And sometimes they can even bring a part of their home with them on their travels, like bringing a special pillow or blanket with them along their travels as well. So there's a strong connection to home that can be seen. Sometimes these people can also be involved in restoration of homes and re-innovation, anything that has to do with property matters that is about rebuilding, recreating, anything along those lines can be seen. These people can be involved in recycling, and things that are done over and over again, things that are sort of renewed through this can be seen. Ponavasu also tends to be very peaceful, very quiet, very calm. There is some sort of a coolness about this as well. Ponavasu is often associated also with good luck, with fortune, with wealth, with abundance. So these are the themes that we see in this nakshatra. So what happens when Saturn comes into Ponavasu? Well, this is a very interesting position because Saturn is definitely going to test you. As I mentioned before, Ponavasu has a pure and innocent quality to it. And with this innocence, that means that there is room to make mistakes. So when Saturn comes into Ponavasu, as Saturn deals with karmic lessons, this is definitely going to test you. This is wanting to see if you will remain ethical in all of your actions. So definitely with this placement, you want to be careful about the actions that you take. This is definitely going to to be a position where karma returns back to you because of this whole theme of return of the light, that arrow that returns back to the sender. So that means that whatever you put out into the universe will definitely come back to you. So this is something to think about. Now, also with this position, this can show a rags to riches story, but particularly this is true for whatever Saturn represents in your chart. So if Saturn does rule your first house, this can be you. But you want to see what house does Saturn have rulership over. But especially with servants, with people working for you, this can be seen. This is definitely a position where you want to help others, where you want to be of service. We talked about those remedial measures earlier, that Saturn wants to see you humble with this placement. Saturn wants you to behave ethically with this placement. So this becomes extremely important. Now, this placement can also make you somewhat irritated and frustrated because you can find yourself constantly getting into difficult situations in life. And this can come from these mistakes of making the wrong decision. So there's a need to slow down a little bit with this position, especially here in the sign of Gemini. It will be a little bit different in Cancer, which we'll talk about in the next video. But with this Gemini energy, it is so changeable and restless that you just want to take the time to think through all of your decisions to make sure that you're taking the correct actions. Now, because this is also associated with the environment, you could also get into some sort of career that has to do with environmental work. You could have some sort of interest in this. And this could also make you interested in wanting to get into nonprofits, into NGOs, into charity work, into anything that helps others. This could get you into politics as well. Something where you are trying to make a difference in the world can be seen for some of you. But ultimately, what this is really about is ensuring that what you put out into the universe is what you want to receive back, because this will definitely take place with Saturn and Ponavasu. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you like this, feel free to leave a like, a comment. If you found this helpful and you want to share this out with a friend, 
make sure to hit that share button. And if you are interested in seeing any of the placements in your chart, if you're confused at all on what your placements are, make sure to check out my chart calculator over at my website, which you can get in any style of Ayanamsha and any chart style. You can customize this chart however you would like with this placement and it is color co coded to your ascendant as well. And of course, again, if you want to have a session with me to break down your entire chart to see what's going on there, make sure to reach out to me. All of my services are listed on my website as well. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below or send me an email. There is an ask me queue as well if you would like to donate to ask a question. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you in the next video.